Hello everyone and welcome to Quirky Education. My name is Neil and today I'll be educating you on the four stroke cycle and how an engine works. So stick around because you don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> Day to day, we see cars out on the road. We own them and maybe we drive them. However, does anyone know how an engine works within those cars? Well, stick around because you're just about to find out the basic principles, components and how they work together. So, what is an engine? Well, an engine is the heart of the vehicle. It is a very complex machine. It converts heat from burning fuel energy to mechanical energy in order for it to move, which is why we call it an internal combustion engine. What makes up the external components of an engine? Ferrous materials. So they are essentially your cast iron, your steel, aluminium, cast aluminium alloy, etc. Okay, so we start off from the very bottom. So first you have an oil pan or an oil sump. That is where the engine oil is stored. And the purpose of that is, is where the oil is distributed around the engine to lubricate the moving parts of an engine. Then we have the engine block. Right, so the engine block is the main component of the engine. Okay, it is the most durable and it is where the combustion takes place. And on top of that, we have the cylinder head. So in the cylinder head, we have the camshafts, we have the valves, we have the spark plugs in there too. And above that, we have the rocker cover. So the rocker cover head is, uh, you can call it a lid uh, to retain all the, the gases which are inside the engine so nothing leaks out. As we've already spoken about the external components of an engine, now let's talk about the internal components of an engine. Right, so first and foremost we have a camshaft. So a camshaft is located uh, above the inlet and exhaust valves and it is responsible for opening and closing the inlet exhaust valves. The inlet valve, okay, which is on the left hand side, so over there, is responsible for inserting the air fuel mixture inside the cylinders. We have an exhaust valve, which is on the right hand side here. The exhaust valve is responsible for expelling the burnt gases out through the exhaust. In the middle, we have a spark plug. Okay, so that spark plug is there to ignite the air fuel mixture within the cylinder. A full two and a half thousand volts of it. We also have a piston. Okay, now piston's um, purpose is very integral in the engine uh, simply because of the fact that it has to provide the up and down expansion movement or forceful movement uh, within the cylinders through combustion. Then we have a connecting rod or another word you can call it a con rod or a piston rod which is attached to the piston gudgeon pin and its responsibility, responsibility is essentially to be used as a lever arm for the piston. You have a crankshaft. Okay, so a crankshaft is also another integral component because it provides reciprocating motion to rotary motion. So you have the piston, and you've got your con rod, and you've got your crankshaft, and its movement is like this. So it's reciprocating. Just like so. Wow, look at those guns. Ooh. Feel like I'm a bit like quirkomania. Anyway, enough of that. I think it's probably worth mentioning as well that the camshaft and the crankshaft is attached via a timing belt. So that timing belt um, is around the crankshaft and camshaft to ensure um, 
proper timing is to actually taking place with the camshafts opening and closing of the valves. So everything is done within perfect time. And the rotation of the crankshaft, ratio of the rotation of crankshaft to the camshaft will be two to one. So every two revolutions the crankshaft will be doing, the camshaft will be rotating once for one full cycle. Now, as we've mentioned that, I think this is a brilliant time to talk about the four stroke cycle. Now what is the four stroke cycle in an engine? Well I can say it is an ongoing sequence, okay? It's been around for um, over a thousand years um, by uh, an individual named Nicholas Otto. Okay, he's mastermind uh, this phenomenon and it is continuing and it will continue going forward in the modern days ahead. So guys, so regardless of you driving a Ford or a Ferrari, the four stroke cycle will always be the same in your engines, guys. Okay? Um, when it comes down to the operation now of the four stroke, I think it's time to get into the nitty gritty, don't you think? Intake stroke, okay, in the intake stroke, what actually occurs is the inlet valve is open and the exhaust valve is closed. As the inlet valve is open, it inserts the air fuel mixture inside the cylinder, thus forcing the piston to bottom dead center of the cylinder. The second stroke occurs, which is called the compression stroke. And in that stroke, the piston goes back up to top dead center. And as it's at the very top, the piston squeezes the air fuel mixture ever so tightly that the air fuel mixture becomes volatile. And what does volatile mean? That's right, the air fuel mixture essentially evap evaporates, making it highly flammable. And we move on to the power stroke. So the power stroke is essentially where the magic happens. And by that, the spark plug ignites the air fuel mixture when it's at the top and then a massive explosion occurs like pshh. okay and as that explosion occurs with both valves shut the piston forces downwards to bottom dead center and it comes back up again for the exhaust stroke so we've got, got burnt gases and we need to expel them uh, which is exactly what the exhaust stroke does inlet valve is closed exhaust valve is open as the piston goes back Now, I need you to do one thing for me, and that is to tell me how many times does the piston go up and down the cylinder in one second within a four stroke cycle. So how many times does the piston go up and down the cylinders in one second in an engine? You leave your comments below, okay? And don't tell me you have no time because we are all on lockdown. Now a quirkier way to remember the four stroke cycle is as follows. Suck, squeeze, bang and blow. Why? The air fuel mixture gets sucked into the cylinder. The air fuel mixture becomes compressed so it squeezes and makes it volatile for power there's an explosion, there's a bang that occurs so the air fuel mixture explodes in the cylinder and for blow, the exhaust to blow out the burnt air fuel mixture and that is a quirkier way to remember alright, to conclude we've learnt about how an engine works and we've learnt about the four stroke cycle which consists of intake, compression, power and exhaust and I want you to stick around for my next video which relates to the four stroke cycle about diesel engines this time okay now just before we go i want you to like i want you to share and i want you to subscribe to my channel 
just so you don't miss out on any of the trending videos which I put on. All right, and if you don't subscribe, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get these guns, my brother. All the quirky maniacs will be coming after you. Ah.